After the squad barely escapes their battle against Dark's forces with teleport rifting them away to Spirit City, a stranger named Clax offers some aid, but at the sound of that, Teleport immediately charges at him, commanding the others to stay back, as Clax is a Dark Agent. Well, I'm a Dark Agent for at least two years now, according to Clax. But, but Teleport isn't buying it and begins to brawl with Clax until he states that fighting is pointless as they need to go now before Dark finds them again. Because meanwhile, on the other side of Spirit City, Isotene, Swordplay, and Scorcher know for a fact that they seriously screwed up by letting Red Talon and they get away, bracing themselves for punishment by their leader, who is also Scorcher's father, the Burning Skull, who lays hands on everyone for the incompetence of not only losing a base, but letting perpetrators escape. But though he is extremely frustrated by the failure, he gives them another chance to make things right by bringing Red Talon and the squad to him alive. Cutting back to Red Talon and the squad, they began to follow Clarks through the underground subway system to his hideout, and they ask him what is his backstory, to which he explains that he is ex-army, ex-black ops, and ex-star. His superpower is that he is an earth elemental, showcasing that unlike the rest of them, he does not need a flashlight to navigate the tunnels as he can use the seismic vibrations of the earth to see. He then asks them all to share their backstory with him, as they continue to make their way to his hideout. And once they get there, they begin to plan their next course of action. They know Dark will be after them because Red Talon was able to steal some encrypted data from the servers at the Hawkboro facility before Teleport blew it up. But there is only one person capable of unlocking Dark level encryption, a crossbreed named Code who is a technopath. And they aren't the only ones aware of this, as Scorcher assembles a small squad with Isotene to go after Code in hopes of getting the hand to him before Red Talon and the squad gets to him. But Code was kind of expecting them, as he had his hideout for crossbreeds evacuated and loaded with traps, automated turrets, and an unbelievable amount of drones that immediately attack Scorcher's squad. As they make their way through Code's defenses, Teleport and the squad rift to Code's location, leading to a banterful confrontation on all fronts against Scorcher's squad. Scorcher vs. Clax, Red Talon vs. Isotene, Mayoki, who now goes by the name Raven Wolf vs. Destruction, Grey Gale vs. Night Owl. And I must interject from the story and say that these panels were pretty well done. Like this fight sequence is actually some of my favorite pages of the entire series thus far. But back to the story. While they all fight, Code attempts to escape during the chaos but is eventually caught by the Dark Agent Gatling. Things, however, took a whole different turn when the Burning Skull himself appears on the scene, and Red Talon without hesitation attacks him while being fueled by the need to avenge his parents who Burning Skull killed when he was just a child. But Burning Skull tells him that their deaths were nothing personal to him, but Red Talon destroying his facility, that is personal, and for that he'll pay. At this point, Teleport, Graven, and Clax have wrapped up the fight and make their way to aid Red Talon in his battle against the Burning Skull. Until Raven Wolf's brothers, Bear Claw and Bison, appear telling him that Red Talon must be taken as it is part of a greater fate that will come to pass. So Bison gives Raven Wolf the ability to telepathically communicate with Red Talon, telling him to surrender to Dark as it is the only way that he can get close enough to enact his revenge. So Red Talon swallows a flash drive as he allows himself to be beaten and taken by the Burning Skull who calls for evacuation, as Teleport and the squad teleport from the scene trusting in Ravenwolf's intel. And with that, let's put Red Talon issue 3 on our explanations judgment scale. For the story, it's a 4 to 5 on our judgment scale. This is my favorite of the three issues of the series that we have covered thus far, and I am doing this comic an injustice in this review, as to say I oversimplified the dialogue would be a serious understatement. Like, it was packed so much that we didn't even get the signature Star Cross Comics ad page at the end of the issue. <laughs> That's no job towards Joe and the ad Star Cross Comics, I just I'm going for the com all comics that I've covered from them that to not see it in this comic means that there was a lot of dialogue in this one. 
As I said in my review of the first issue of the series, I knew upfront, at least from the marketing material, that it was going to get better as it continued. And this issue proved that. I love that the continued expansion into the operations of Dark and the method Kenneth's taken to establish them as the real big bad of the story that aren't no joke. We got a bit of deeper backstory to Miyoki who embraced his darker clan identity of Ravenwood. But to me personally, Miyoki the Wolf is a cooler name than Ravenwood. So I'll be going to be sticking with Miyoki for the rest of my reviews. The battle and banter between Red Talon Squad and Dark's Grey Squad was awesome. Teleport rifting in with a baseball bat to knock Grey Gale out is my single favorite moment of this entire comic because of its simplicity. On a battlefield where you have elementals pulling out earth swords, fire cyclones, and ice shards, seeing someone get knocked out by a baseball bat was just poof. <laughs> my only gripe with this issue is the flow coming to the end of including Miyoki's brothers Bison and Clawbay, telling Miyoki that Red Talon needs to be beaten by Dark because it is the only way for him to defeat them. For me, it threw a, it threw a wrench into the buildup and flow it had going, especially after seeing Red Talon giving Burning Skull the beating that Scorcher wished he could only lay on his father. Like, I get the approach to it, but its implementation had me doing a triple take to really grasp it. Like I had to reread the last four, four pages to really understand what was going on. It's only like on my fourth read when I finished typing up the script and going back through the comic to really understand what's going on is when I realized that maybe it's that maybe I'm just slow sometimes with the comics I cover that I realized that oh the silhouetted images at the top of the steps were bison and claw bay. I it took me four reads to really grasp that. So maybe it was just a matter of me being a bit slow sometimes. I think it was also because of how abrupt it felt. Every other moment in the comic had a kind of flow to it as everything was filled with exposition and dialogue, but not the kind of exposition and dialogue that you know you get annoyed with and like, ah, I just want getting fed up with this, like just dumping a lot of nonsense stuff onto you or just they didn't do a good job in explaining the characters so they need everyone to just monologue about who they are like the dialogue in this issue in particular to read through to understand the character motivations and why they fought was really good it felt it actually it made me like the characters even more especially clacks and scorcher like scorcher the character development of scorcher so far has been really really well done but then to get to the end where, you know, now that it was predictable, like they, they was expecting a particular outcome, but to go through like all of that in the comic to then come to the point where it's just like Red Talon must lose because of this needs to happen. And seeing Red Talon just laying, just sharing licks onto Burnett Skull only to be defeated because he has to lose was a kind of like really cool build up to then just have it flatline because this must happen. I really think that seeing Burning Skull after a long drawn out flight, Lauren Red Talon would have been a better flow to me personally than Miyuki's brothers suddenly appearing with a vision that he must lose when he was clearly winning the fight. Like that move is dirty. Only for him to then get pummeled down by Burning Skull. But that's my thoughts. Because regardless, I did enjoy the issue a lot. It is my favorite of the issue. But that was my only gripe. The only thing I had a bit of an issue. When it comes to artwork and creativity. This is a solid 4.5 out of 5. I think at this point it's only fair that eventually I get Brian Dawson onto the Kudoshim Initiative podcast. Because I've covered more than, I think, 10 books across three series that he did the artwork for. And his style has really grown on me. There are a good amount of nightmare fuel faces and weird body proportions in there. But I think that's all comics. At least I've been reading some Marvel comics by Jonathan Hickman, one of my favorite writers. Particularly Secret Warriors, the 2011 storyline and there are a lot of weird body proportions in there so i could get past it alan emmanuel's colors really complemented brian's artwork for me more than anyone else has in any of the 
previous issues or art pieces that I've seen from Brian Dawson, particularly in regards to Star Wars comics. Like Burden Skull design in this issue was straight fire. Yes, I said that about a fire based card, as well as Clax's Earth Armor design. When it comes to my enjoyment and how likely I am to recommend it, it's a 5 out of 5. This is the best issue of the series thus far, and I look forward to seeing where it continues to go in the future. So overall, Red Talon issue 3 by Ken Keller over at Star Cross Comic gets a 4.5 out of 5 from the explanation. Let me know what you think of the comic based on what was discussed in the comments below. Do you agree with me or do you have a different take than I do? The link to purchase the comic will be in the description. If you enjoyed the video, then why not consider leaving a like on it and subscribing for more reviews and coverage of comics made by professing believers. If you enjoyed the video to the point you want to check out another one on the channel, then be sure to click the card at the top right hand corner of your screen to check out our future The Red Talent reviews or check out this video that YouTube thinks you will like next.